Welcome back and Happy New Year. I'm excited to start this new year off with some fun art projects. And at the end of the year, I thought it would be hilarious to do a little featured piece I've been talking about behind the scenes with my friends from The Five Count, Dustin and Tun from KMSU in Mankato, Minnesota's Five Count radio show. They do it every Saturday night. They've done it for like 19 years. They joke about being like the radio hunks of Mankato and, and things like that. And Big fan of the show. It's always quirky and weird. And tonight's episode had Cabbage Patch Kids on it. Uh, so it goes from heavy metal to wrestling to Cabbage Patch, anything in between. But anyway, I thought for a Christmas gift for them, I would do just a sketch. I had an idea at the kitchen table one day. So I grabbed a piece of paper and did this sketch. I'll show it to you clearer on the screen. This just rough sketch of a couple like comic book hero style radio guys. Then I took the next step, got them to send me some selfies and some promo pics and things and photoshopped their faces onto the sketch I did because I wanted this to be pretty well recognizable as them instead of just some random characters. So I took that Photoshop version and put it on the light box in my office here. And that video didn't turn out great. I was hoping you'd be able to see some of the dark on the light box, but it just looks like black in a glowing box. You're seeing it now. So I got a main sketch that I was pretty happy with, but I was kind of hesitant to share it with you guys because although, you know, this is the process of you know getting back into art and doing things like this, it's pretty goofy and I didn't know if there'd be any interest. But... It turns out it was a great exercise that was really useful to have brushed up on this style because about a week, week and a half later, after I had kind of wrapped up that, I got a random call from my old company that was an event production company, and uh, they were looking for, on behalf of another company, an artist to do some renderings for a kind of outdoor gala event that uh, will be happening this March. And they needed proposals and they wanted to have, you know, custom art drawn for this project and reached out to me and they said, hey, we need this. And it's, you know, I think we had our first meeting on Wednesday and they needed it by Friday. That bled in over the weekend and got it to them on Sunday. But it was exactly this kind of style that I could use for it. And so having just done this project, uh, being brushed up on some of those skills made it really easy to swing into their project. And, you know, hopefully it does a good job for them. They seemed pretty happy with the work and I enjoyed doing it. It was a couple long nights, but sometimes that's the way things go in event world. So I am sharing this process with you because although the other one's the one I got paid for, it's a very similar process. And I've even had some ideas since then of how to make this easier or how you might want to try this at home. And so obviously it started out with coming up with concepts and ideas. And with that other project, I use some stock images. I have a subscription to Storyblocks. It's not affiliated or anything. I pay full price for it. But it's a relatively low cost stock image, music, and video site. I've used them for probably 10 years. So when I needed people for this event setting, you know, there's only so many poses you can come up with and you're, you know, trying to think of the whole concept at, at one time. And so thinking, you know, I need really need a family to be laughing and smiling and doing generally this. That's a great use for stock photography to be able to pull an image, pull it into Photoshop, slap it in front of whatever, you know, custom design element was behind it. And so I did that for a lot of the people, kind of similar to what I did with Ton and Dusty with their faces, and then traced it out so it all had a similar drawing style, rather than having some stuff drawn and some stuff realistic and, you know, trying to meld those worlds. Uh, I wanted everything to have a cohesive look. In that instance, everything got traced and then kind of stylized as I went. And then we brought it back into Photoshop. And we'll get into that in a minute. I want to show you some screen recordings of kind of how I did this. And again, I'll use Ton and Dusty as examples. And you can see that. And if you love these images, uh, they are going to put them on uh, their website and like have t-shirts be able to be made of them. So if you're interested, that will be coming. And at the stage I was doing this uh, project for the five count, it was 
just something fun, just kind of a lark. Like I said, I just sketched something out on a printer paper and just did all my tracings and stuff on that medium the whole time. But I wasn't quite sure what kind of pen I wanted to use, how much detail I wanted to give. So I had three pen options. The first was this Pigma Micron pen, which has a really nice thin line and the ink dries really well. It's nice, but I also like the smoothness of just this Uniball pen. And then there's the old standby, just the quick and dirty Sharpie that usually works for things. So I wanted to try all three of these options for a couple reasons. One, for just getting my hand used to doing it and seeing, you know, if maybe the second or third time it would feel a little more organic or, you know, have a little better flow. Sometimes when you, you start out, you end up being a little rigid at the beginning. And I also did slightly different versions of shading to kind of get a feel of which one I think would translate best into the next stage. So I think I started out with a Pigma Micron, then went to the Uniball, and then Sharpie last. Um, if that's not correct, I'll fix it on the screen here. And although I think my hand did loosen up, I also maybe got a little sloppy, and the Uniball and Sharpie options both kind of felt like they were just bleeding too much into the page. And I'd make a line that was really nice, and then by the time it bled out, it didn't really have the same finesse as the Micron did. So the Pigma Micron's the one I went with as kind of the final option. You can see all three of them laid out here, and then selected that one. And so the next step was scanning it in. I don't have my scanner hooked up because I haven't done this stuff in a while, but I do have a nice camera, so I set it up nicely under the lights and just took a photo of it. Brought that into Photoshop. And from here, I'll do a screen recording and show you what I was doing in Photoshop. Now, there are better folks at Photoshop than I am, so I'm just telling you how I did this. And like I said, we'll get to another method here shortly. I just want to show you the basics and then I'll show you how I built the layers up. So here's the drawing. When I pulled this in, because it was a photograph, it wasn't uniform and completely this stark black and white. So I did a few passes of brightness and contrast. First, just doing the contrast a few times and then bringing up the brightness just a little bit and separating that out. So after I did that, I'm going to cancel this because it's already been done. I also then selected all of the white space and did a select similar and deleted that. So now I'm left with just a layer that's just the drawing on white and the, the white is just another layer I've got here. See, I can turn that off. And so this is what I'm starting with. I then also, because this came right off the pen, I went in here and some of the places where maybe uh, Tun's chin, uh, you know, the whiskers went into the sleeve here, I cleaned those up. Um, you can see this little tag section here with just a little bit of the shirt sticking out. I'm on the wrong layer. Always make sure you're on the right layer that you want to work on. So clean things like that up. I'm not, again, not going to go through that on this. You know, if there were any artifacts, stray ink marks, you know, I would get rid of those. So then I pretty much just went through and I will make a new layer down here uh, just for the sake of showing you. And then I took the polygonal lasso tool here and just kind of went through my basic shapes. So... We aren't going to do this, but let's say we want Tun's shirt to be green. So I went through, and again, I know there are faster ways to do this, but this is just the way I did it. Um, this shirt comes down here. And so I'm staying behind my black drawing lines. Staying within that, you can see there in Dusty's hat, I'm halfway between both of them. And then when I have a gap in the drawing, I just kind of split the difference. And I have the feather on this selection tool set to zero. So it will stay right where I'm putting this with no feather. And that's just that little level of fuzziness you would get, you know, if, 
and and we'll talk about that in a second. Sure. I work with the trackpad, so it's very easy for me to just um, with a finger swipe I can resize this and keep going because I like to do my editing both in Photoshop and Final Cut one-handed. So I use a trackpad for almost everything and then if I have to do a key command, I will bring the other hand up. And we're down around his beefy arm here. So let's zoom out here and I'll just pick a color because it's just an example. Let's say we want this to be like super green. Um, so I would then make this his base color and call this tons shirt. I would make another layer, select this, select on shirt, make another layer, or actually I wouldn't do it this way. This is the way I'd do it. I would get my paintbrush and maybe black with a good feather, um, a nice soft brush here, and on this layer here, I just do shadow, shadow, and then maybe a little bit of shadow here, and just a hair bleeding into that. So you could do it that way. Usually I would do this and just let these bleed over, then go back to that ton shirt layer select that space around the shirt and then delete the fades but this way works as well and do just one more right here take the eraser tool again very soft and give them some beefy chest glow there this whole thing is supposed to be kind of over the top and ridiculous. So I would do that and then bring down the opacity of that layer. I would say, you know, bring that down until it seemed a little more natural. And then if I wanted to do a second pass with tighter shadows, I would make my brush smaller and bring it in here and just right here here, here, a little bit behind Dusty's hat, and here. And this is where I was saying I would now take the selection tool down to the original shirt layer, select outside of that, go up to this new layer, and delete, bring down the opacity until that looks a little more normal. So that's basically the process I followed, and I did that with, you know, I then I would add some highlights, tons, shirt, shadow, two, or, you know, detail, shadow, or something like that, so I'd know what it was. But basically, I'd keep building up like that and do the same thing, you know, through the glasses, and I'll walk you through these layers. Uh, so let's get rid of this stuff, because this is all just examples kind of take you up through I think I probably started with either the skin or the shirts you know the clothes and then maybe I did the skin uh, behind there but I'm gonna just work you up through the the layers as we go here so the microphones colored in the mic heads were a little brighter gray here is I didn't label it but it's the microphone highlights you can see I switch those on and off and then here we go ton shirt ton shirts gonna be grayish. I wanted it to be like a white t-shirt. So just a little white so we could add some shirt, uh, some shadow. And then another set of shadows and then some highlights so the highlights could actually be white. And then a little extra into the, sh uh, the number five there. And then we go in with blue hair, blue Superman hair, four ton. And then the skin above that and so this is 
I actually color picked from those images I had of their their actual faces. I color picked off of those so they would have their actual skin tone. And then Dusty's tongue, same thing. And then glasses. I just did a very, you can see the opacities on 20% and so I just did it white and then backed that that off and then another you know, really light 50% white uh, for tons glasses up here. Then Dusty's pants and then pants shadows and pants highlights. Dusty's shirt and, and blue hat here. They kind of intersect but they're you know, separate units. I, I just put them together. And then shirt and hat shadow and then a little deeper shadows in there and shirt and hat highlights so you can see that's all adding up and then the five count logo on the t-shirt and then we pull in tons beard and got some <laughs> some grittiness in there and then a little more beard and then dusty's beard we lighten that up and then add more shadows in the skin turn that off and on again so you can see it goes from being pretty flat to having some dynamics again this is just me playing with the brushes with some uh, varying degrees of feather or softness to them and just building these up to get the shadow areas and then another set of shadows to really darken some key areas and then some highlights that got us our base and then if we turn off the white we put them on a more like what they'd look like on a t-shirt actually see you know what the design comes out to now they also have a, a song that they made up called the five count christmas and it's the one of the most depressing but hilarious songs uh, ever and it's also got a, a bit of sweetness to it so it's, it's kind of cool i wanted to pay tribute to that so we also did another version replacing the microphones with some christmas items and giving them both santa hats so if we look at, so here you can see the layout with the text, Mankato's Public Radio Hunks, and then the five count, and it's a five count Christmas. So those are the designs that I sent the guys for just kind of a proof of proof of concept uh, to see what they thought. A uh, ton has actually grown his hair out longer now, and so... We're going to do a final version that's got a little bit longer hair, a little crazier. But essentially, these are the designs. So I told you I had another idea after doing this project and then the other client project. And that is with Illustrator. In Illustrator, you can take a rasterized drawing, which this is, and convert it into vector illustration. And if it works... Uh, we could do some of this or maybe all of this in Illustrator. Now, you may think I have old style skills at Photoshop. Uh, my Illustrator skills are very lousy, but let's see if we can make something happen. Okay, here we are in Illustrator, and you can see already my artboard is way smaller than the actual image. And, but because we're going for vector, that's okay. I'll just resize this to fit in the space. So let's see if we can convert this and if I can remember how to convert this. So we go object, image trace, and I think we want make and expand. Okay, so let's see what it gave us. If we go up here to our group, you can see we have a whole lot of stuff. So let's start, if we, see if we can just start picking this apart a little bit here. And what kind of, so it went very abstract. Where this works best, in my experience, is in sections like this where you have it clearly blocked off. And I can select that section and say, let's, let's make that section instead of white, better color here. So that's a clearly defined space where we can shirt select it. Let's see if we can add a color to that. So 
the downside of this is it kind of just makes random shapes and you can spend a lot of time going through and cleaning things up, trying to break them apart or turning things off in the different layers. But on something this complex, it's kind of kind of a struggle. Unless, like I said, you have to have a specific enclosed shape that then you you can then colorize. And so like if I select Dusty's face here, it's also going to select everything else. Now, the upside of this is that you can take this whole thing and make it as you know, big as you want, and the line quality will stay the same because it's converted into vector paths. You know, so if you wanted to blow it up on a billboard, it would save its line quality. But for this, it's just not going to work out really well. So let's expand that into segments. So, okay, so I'm scrolling through here. I'm going to try to throw away any any layers that have white in the, or that are just white. That should leave me with just the drawing and no background. Okay, I think I got all the background white deleted. Okay, so I'm going to lock that so I can't screw it up. And um, zoom in here, we have most of our lines. Now I should be able to make new paths using the pen tool and do a similar process to what I did in Photoshop. So let's do ton shirt again. And do path. So you're going to see now it's actually overwriting that path, but we don't care because we're going to cover all this stuff up. And, Oops. and we could do just the intersecting lines. That is a way to do it. So you can see why I prefer doing this in Photoshop. You have a little more freedom of movement than the constant snapping, which I'm sure you can turn off, but. Sometimes when it gets too big, you have to just kind of make a space there and then we'll come in and move these lines to where they actually need to be. And real Illustrator users will be screaming at the at the screen right now, but okay, good enough for now. So now we've got that path made, and we're gonna put it underneath here. And so now it's white, but we're going to color it to make it blue. And are we in grayscale? We're in grayscale, okay. Okay, so that took me forever, but maybe if you're really good at Illustrator, this will all seem really simple, and you can do everything you did in Photoshop, and in the end, be able to take your whole drawing, color and everything, and scale it up as large as you want, and still have that detail. So, I'm not going to finish this because I'm done with this project, but I just wanted to give you that little example of how you can convert a rasterized drawing into a semi-close vector space illustration. There's some fiddly steps to it, but it can be done. And depending on your drawing and your output needs, this might be the way to go. But the overall main thing I want to bring you is that I was able to respond to a real client paying client's request because I had just brushed up on some of these creative skills and been ready to use them when the opportunity arose. So if you have a creative outlet, you've been, you know, just letting slide for a while, 
pick it back up even if it's you know during breaks and you sketch on a napkin or whatever um uh, pick it back up you never know what's going to happen and uh like i said i'm glad i was ready and relatively back in the swing of things so that when the opportunity called i was able to respond and actually make some money from art which it's been a while so uh, that felt really really great and if you've been putting off creative endeavors i want you to have that same feeling too even if it's not for payment if it's just for the satisfaction of knowing you're doing something you love so thanks for watching have a great day i'll catch you in the next one and eventually we're going to get back into that book idea